the witnesses here, and uh, I just want to, for, again, for the public in general, the honours we are uh, scrutinising today is 2015. That's four years ago. Four years ago, just for the public in general. We have 16, 17, 18, we're in 19 at the moment. Why, why are we scrutinising 2015, and what's the status of 16, 17, and 18? Uh, I think the public should be let know why we're four years behind. Who's answered this? The answer, um, in part, at least. Um, the, um, the audit of the 2015 financial statements I explained in my opening statement, uh, there were difficulties with the first sets of financial statements for the ETBs in settling the format of the uh, financial statements for those, um, and uh, there were a number of, of other um, issues. That caused a knock-on delay, so we were starting the audit of this at the beginning of 2017. Because of the difficulties that were uncovered in the course of the audit, this, uh, it, it, it obviously delayed the completion of the 2015 financial statements, but, uh, and that's had a knock-on effect for 16, 17 and 18. We're currently doing the audit of the financial statements for 2016. I would expect we'll do 17 as well this year, and then we'll have to do 2018 and 2019 next year. It's, a, it's very unsatisfactory, but well, the circumstances were quite strange. unusual. You wouldn't, run a, you wouldn't run a private business that way, anyway. No, I you wouldn't. I can't assure you no. that much. Uh, I just want to go back. I read the Controller of the General's report. And I, I haven't read it last night for an hour, an hour and a half. All I, all I complete, was just, there's complete dysfunctional governance and oversight control. And as far as I'm concerned, everyone was asleep at the wheel. Now, we can't talk about what happened because we're, 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 we're being warned not to have it. But there's issues there and concerns. And... What I want to ask, where was everyone when this was happening? It seems to be controlled by individuals, executives more so. Where was the, the Department of Education? Where was the Secretary General? Where was the government uh, the board? Where was the Audit Committee while all this was happening? I mean, someone has to answer questions. Uh, there was a torn report. Now, what you're telling us here today, everything is hunky dory. We've uh, learned our lessons, and from here on in, nothing will ever happen again. But how can we assure the public out there that this is not happening elsewhere? There's a lot of EC ECBs around the, around the country, and um, I'm just wondering uh, can the controller, uh, the Secretary General, please uh, give me a comment on that? Yeah. And you use lovely words there, robust governments, regime codes, policies, and to support good governments. These are lovely words. They're great words. Where were all these in the last couple of years? I, I used other words as well. I know you did. I, read, I heard them all. I heard them all, but I picked, out, I picked out these ones. Yeah, that was for the, for the future. We ha that, is, that is what they have indicated they have put in place. We are, we are obviously very concerned about, about the findings of, of the reports. We were concerned when the CNAG approached us. About about the uh, about issues arising in Kildare Wicklow ETB, we also had a number of other issues ourselves. Uh, so when we put those together, we had a concern, and that's why uh, once we were, once we asked we asked the ETB for responses, we weren't satisfied with the responses, and that's why we advised the minister, and the minister decided to put the statutory review in place. And following from that, then obviously the CNAG delayed paused his audit until that was complete and then took account of it. So cl clearly there are, there are matters of concern about, as Thorne has indicated, about the effective operation, the effective... At what stage do you become aware, the department become aware uh, of problems, of concerns, whatever words you'd like to use, uh, and what was the immediate reaction of the department? Well, when we, we were aware of concerns on two major buildings, and we were following up on those individually, but when the CNAG approached us, about other issues in one other major building and across a number of other areas. We, we immediately met with the chair of the ETB and the, C the then CEO. We asked for responses to the issues and when we weren't satisfied with the responses, we instigated the review. And what, what, what did you do then? We instigated the review. The review is a statutory review and then it has this response of a plan from, from the ETB as part of it and the ETB engaged with, with the outcome of the review and agreed to put an action plan in place. And who, brought, who, who asked Mr Torn or Dr Torn to come in and do a report? At what stage was, that, was he brought in? He was brought in in October 2017, uh, two, three months after we learned initially, but after we'd given the ETB a chance to respond. 
No, I haven't read Dr. Torrance's report, but I presume it was uh, skating, was it, and in what happened, and it's, it's uh, the outcome of his report uh, as, as has brought us to where we are now. As I indicated in my opening statement, it, it's, he, he was clear that the, the procedures were... were that the procedures were there, but they weren't being implemented. Right, before I, I go away from you, Mr. Frost, um, what was your an afterthought? What's your afterthought of the procedures and what happened in uh, in, in Wicklow or, or Kildare Wicklow ETB? What's your opinion now, and uh, can it happen again, and could it be happening somewhere else in the country? Um, As Secretary General of Defence, yeah, I'm very concerned. Um, we have sought to update governance arrangements to ensure that it doesn't happen again. The code of practice in particular, the code of governance, we've, we've put a number of elements in there to look at issues that have come up in this regard and we will keep doing so and we did that before the CNAG review was complete. We will be lis listening to what, to what we're hearing here, uh, views of this committee and we, we may seek to update the code of governance further. We have, as I indicated, amended procedures on minor, small, co devolved projects. We have amended procedures on big, devolved building projects uh, as a result, amongst other things, of lessons that we've learned in this regard. We, 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 we haven't seen anything that would cause concerns that, that there may be similar activities elsewhere in the ETB sector, but that doesn't mean that we can take absolute assurance from that. We, have, we are seeking to develop the role of the internal audit service the, for the ETBs, which is an independent internal audit service for the ETBs further, and we have a number of arrangements in the, in the Code of Governance to, to, to look at issues, and we'll be looking at different sorts of thematic reviews within the sector to see can we learn from any of the... To, to see can we learn from any of the lessons learned, and I think the, the biggest lesson for me is um, how can we ensure that members of ETBs have an oversight and how can we ensure that the culture within an ETB, both members and staff, allows for people to, to, to look at other people's behaviour and where there's difficulties in other people's behaviour, that there are arrangements in place, the culture to, of challenge. And that, that is an overall governance challenge and I think that that's what we have to look at. The training that we're putting in place on the Code of Governance will hopefully assist in that regard. But obviously, I mean, the, 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 the findings are very strong in both the Thorne report and the CNAG's report. Okay. And I want to come to Dr. Add to Deputy as well, like we've put a significant effort into enhanced supports for ETBI, which in, helps to ensure a consistency of approach in terms of strength and governance across the sector. And within the buildings area, we do compliance checks uh, with pro an annual program of compliance checks of 120 devolved projects across schools and ETBs. And that's a program where we get down at school but that, that seems to have failed here in, in what were this investigation is going on. Well, we, well we, from what I read now, well, and it's only uh, my again, opinion. Again, we did compliance checks. We've had 120 compliance checks across the schools and ETB sector. Annual, annually and, since 2014. And there were, for example, two compliance checks on small devolved projects in KWETB in 2014, and there wasn't a difficulty with those. Yeah, and those compliance checks involve visit out to the school, checking the supporting documentation. Can so I ask you two questions then? In the uh, poor contract management practices contribute to additional costs of 483,000 regarding the construction of Atlow Community College. Can I ask you then what you're saying, and how's that controlling general, controlling general puts that in there? Yeah. I mean, that's uh, the opposite to what you're saying. Well, it's, it's you know, uh, poor contract management practice contributes additional costs yeah. of 483, which is nearly a half million, yeah. uh, regarding the construction of Barclow Community College. It's still in black and white. So what you're saying and what's here yeah. is, is contradictory. This, this matter is covered in detail in, in the Thorne Report, and there's, for, there's, a, there's a disagreement recorded in the Thorne Report about how the contractor was... Uh, was, was so asked, there's a system failure. There's a system failure. Can, can you can you please let me answer, Deputy? There was a there's a disagreement recorded in the Thorne report about how the the contractor was asked to speed up the construction. Uh, the 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 ETB is required to go to us with such a request and did not. 
uh, so we only learned about it when, when the bill came in. So, that, so, so who's, that who's responsible? Yeah, are we, I thought from can, we, can we identify who's responsible for Dover? Well, again, I think we want I the, the ATB. You're not identifying any individual. No, but it's here in the report. I mean, that's the public, the public yeah. need to know why 483 uh, additional costs. That's additional right. costs. Could, could I say further? Uh, we, we don't know if the ETB had approached us whether we would have agreed. We might have agreed because there wasn't an urgent need for school places. But the fact is that the ETB didn't approach us. Can I ask Dr Keyes to comment on that? This is one of the projects that is currently under investigation by the Guardian. It has been reformed so, uh, the Thorn Report in relation to ascertaining uh, the answers to those questions. Uh, in terms of the acceleration of that project, um, in terms of the public works contract, there's the role of the employer representative. So uh, we have tightened our internal controls in relation to that particular issue to ensure that there can be no acceleration outside of the contract without the prior, without going through the employer representative, who and then in turn will go to the department and yeah, we would get uh, authorisation. That didn't uh, happen to do in this that. case, though. Did it? Um, well, I think as the Secretary General has explained, the department uh, weren't aware, were not aware uh, that the acceleration project had taken place. And as the Thorn report outlines, there's, there is a dispute and there's a difference of view in relation to how that happened. And it is, and I will say that this that particular issue has been referred uh, by Dr. Thorn uh, to the to the Guardi for further investigation. So half a million is out there question, with a question mark over. Pardon? Half a million is almost out there. Request man, there's another one here. Uh, National school costs uh, installing uh, modular classrooms at 206,000. These classrooms were relocated to be new post-primary school three months later at a cost of 73,000. Uh, this stuff uh, is that under investigation as well? Um, I, this is big money. No, I think in relation to, I think the the appointment of the contractor is an issue. But the, I think in our response uh, to the CNAG report, uh, we we gave an explanation of how that happened uh, in terms of the information available to us. But um, you know, obviously we have accepted the findings here. Uh, obviously, you'll note from my statement that they are of regret, and you're correct in some of the expenditures incurred here. Um, and, um, Can I ask uh, why were they purchased uh, in, in April 2015 modular classrooms at, at that cost of 216000 and three months after were relocated at a cost of 73000 yeah. Why were they I, got it all in yeah, April and three months after they were relocated? Was indeed, maybe to, I'll give some, my director of schools here will give a background to that. Uh, I mean, this, uh, someone has to answer these questions. Like, no? yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I just have to say, I might forget the message from the... That's just a recording here, the Oracle Broadcasting System, so I have to ask you to put them on airplane mode. Silent is not... You can't be sending texts in here because it is interfering with the recording system. Chair, so, before... And that's across the board. Everybody in the room, sure. people in the Before Mr Loftus comments, I'd just like to say one thing. Yeah. We, we don't think it's appropriate to comment on... To, to indicate that a matter is, is or isn't under investigation, partly because we don't know. We've referred everything to the Guardi. Okay, Thanks. the full reports have gone to the Guardi. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not so I'm not commenting I, I in make, any I, sense. I, I make no apology in raising yeah. this yeah. Um, yeah. taxpayers' but, money, but, uh, yes, but, which is there in black I, and white, by the controller and the general in front of me. Yeah. I make no apologies to, any, apologies to anyone that I raised that I'm, for the general public. I'm not asking you to apologise, deputy. I'm just saying that I'm not commenting. What, on what may or may not be under investigation. We're, we're going to have a go. We're going to answer your question now as best we can. But what I'm saying is we cannot comment about whether any particular matter is under investigation because we don't know. So just to be clear, the CNAG produced this report, right? Normal circumstances we would look at them in these situations. In the interim, it's been referred to the Guardi. You could make a case we shouldn't be discussing it because it's before the Gardaí, but we decided to discuss it within very limited strictures. And we're not. And in fact, nobody in this room can say what is or what is not being invested by the Gardaí, and we can't presume. So some of the questions going to be asked here today are not going to be answered here today, or shouldn't be answered here today. It'll be up to the guards to deal with the matter in due course. So some of the questions cannot and should not be answered 
here today. I have to be straight on that. Cause they kept away from what you asked me. I, I know, but I just I mean, picked out those two because yeah. I think they're, they're blatant uh, waste of, well, I know it's a waste of taxpayers' money, yeah, but see, money, we, money that's gone astray anyway. We'll seek to answer your question, Deputy. Yeah. And I suppose just to add, in relation to the previous question you had in relation to ARCLO, the, the issues in relation to that, the Department had already been aware of them and was following up with the DTB in relation to that prior to the issue coming to the attention of the CNAG as part of the audit, uh, and, 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 and we explained where we're at on that. In terms of the temporary accommodation in relation to Nays Community National School, that was a school in prefabs. Uh, it had demographic needs. There was two additional prefabs approved for it to cater for those needs. S separately, those original prefabs, the older prefabs that it had, uh, uh, incurred some damage in storms. There was emergency approvals done to make repairs to that, but there was concerns amongst the parental group there in terms of the suitability of those, the, 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 the full school to be operating at that location. A decision was made at that time uh, to temporarily locate the school out at a vacant permanent building that the department had built in Craddockstown, which we had earmarked as an advanced building for Nace Community College, uh, and that was a temporary move. So, uh, and when the, the, the prefabs were provided in the original location in, for Nace CNS, uh, but because of the concerns and the parental concerns, the school did not go back to the original prefabs. Those prefabs then were vacant, and the ETB uh, had a need for demographic need for two prefabs in Maynooth, and they were relocated there. And I suppose the overall context, when one look at, we're looking at this issue, is the scale and extent of demographic growth in the Kildare area at that particular time. Like over the last decade, primary enrolments in Kildare would have grown by about 20%, post-primary enrolments close enough to, to 35 to 40%. So it was a huge demographic pressures, and it wasn't easy to be managing and catering for these uh, at that time, and that's, that's a context for that. Can I ask then, and maybe this is to... to, to that's of most pertinent in the CNAG report was the procurement process in relation to the uh, mo removal of the prefabs from, from these two minutes. Can I ask, are there any consequences for, because of this uh, investigation going on, are there any consequences for projects and bills and et cetera, and any, uh, um, you know, are there going to be any problems for the ETB in, in, the, in Wicklow and in Kildare because of this? And is this going to hold up projects? Is it going to have any effect on the teacher staff? Is it going to have any effects across the board uh, just because of what's happening? Or is everything okay? That way, is everything going according to, to, uh, to order? We, we haven't pulled back from uh, allowing KWETB to proceed with, with um, arrangements in relation to advancing school building projects as a result of this, but obviously we're working very closely with them. Clearly, a matter as big as this uh, has an impact on KWETB as a whole and their head office in particular, and managing through all of these issues dealing with, for example, our Thorn report, dealing with the CNAG's report, and uh, supplying information for, 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 the, for the Guard investigations. That does have an impact on, on the capacity of, of the organisation, and we supported the organisation by allowing it to have some extra additional staff at head office to, to engage with that. But that is a challenging issue for any organisation to work its way through. But from our point of view, in, in devolving projects to the ETB or advancing with the currently devolved projects that has proceeded. Yeah. It is probably one of the fastest growing areas in the country. We're very confident they are in the cold face of that and, and with the additional controls we've put in place in terms of projects and service level agreements and we've made clear to the ETB as well that we'll be providing additional project management supports to help assist the ETB during this difficult time, bearing in mind the urgent need within the county for additional accommodation. Can I go back to Dr. Keyes again? Uh, I just want to go back to governance again within the system and we say what happened again. Uh, what role does the board play, uh, the board now and the board then, what role does the board play in an ETB? I mean, it might, needs to be defined. Might, might, might like to answer it. I suppose the, the role of the board is set out in the Act in terms of its statutory and uh, reserve functions. And so there are particular decisions that can only be made by the board and have to be referred to the board. Um, 
in addition to which then under the Code of Governance the, the oversight arrangements of the board are set out and the respective committees of the board of particular importance are the Audit and Finance Committee but indeed all of the other committees of the board, uh, boards of management of schools, youth committee etc. Um, so they are the structures that are in place to allow uh, the board to have oversight but uh, perhaps I might talk to the chairperson who is here. And he what did the board wanted. meet? The board uh, meet every two months. Um, there, there are required numbers of meetings. That's again set out in the Education and Training Board Act, and there are required numbers of meetings set out from the for the Finance Committee and the Audit Committee. And each of those have their terms of reference in terms of what they do. Uh, the Finance Committee reports to the board, and the Audit Committee uh, reports to, to the board. Um, and, and that reporting arrangement is set out. I know that in our own case, the, the Finance Committee report more regularly to our board, and it probably is an area now that we need to address in terms of the link between the Audit Committee and the reporting rela re relationship to the board. During the time of concern, then, that we're talking about here, we say that's an investigation. Uh, was the board meeting every two months that time? The board. Yes, now I wasn't there so I can't definitely confirm that. I do know since I came in the board has met its statutory requirements by way of meeting, in addition to which it has had a number of special meetings and I suppose it's worth saying that during the course of this investigation the board uh, had a number of additional meetings and special meetings and um, really, really worked hard in terms of cooperating with the various investigations and in terms also of working uh, with the executive in terms of the delivery of the roadmap for the future, which is our audit action plan. Was mm -hmm. the Audit Committee and Finance Committee meeting regularly as well? The Audit Committee, I have the exact details there, but no, you're on the Finance Committee. Uh, Maybe I'll refer this to our chairperson. Uh, uh, yeah, I have uh, the exact uh, number of times they met. We're required to meet four times a year, but mostly yeah. we've more, meet more than that. We've met, um, I think, um, 16 or 17 times since we were set up in late 2015, the Audit and Finance Committee came into operation. They were appointed in May but didn't start meeting until October 2015, which was two thirds of the way through this year in, in question at the moment in these accounts. So we've had, I, I gather, um, 16 full meetings and we've made 15 reports. So after each meeting, typically, we make a, a chairperson's report back to the main board of the work we've been doing and, and our findings, etc. Were, were you aware that there was concerns um, uh, within the ETB at that stage? No. The board or the other committee or the finance committee, in any, in any section, were they any aware that there was concerns, uh, ongoing concerns with the executive? I, I, I was a, an, a, a, if you, you might use the phrase, an ordinary board member and I was a member of finance committee and I had no inkling whatsoever until I received a letter in July to, or August 2017 that there was an investigation. Well, well, can I ask straight out, were there someone asleep at the wheel? Were there someone asleep at the wheel? Uh, well, if you look at the CNAG report, it talks about incomplete information being, being, being provided uh, and, and perhaps... Uh, part of information gathering is that the information should be tested. So there should be a, a very strict internal controls, and then there's a, you know that goes to the audit committee for checking, and the audit committee reports to the, to the main board. Finance committee has done its work on the finances, and I don't think the controller and auditor general has found any want in the actual finances, as distinct from the procurement procedures, etc., and all these things. And um, um, uh, done, uh, as well as that. There was a, an internal audit unit. Now, to my best of information, that the, the audit committee did ask the internal audit unit to test the procurement procedures back as far as 2016 or 2017. But the IAU, the internal audit unit, had other uh, needs at that stage, and that didn't happen. It's happening now, as it happens. What was the, what, I have to give them the what was the relationship with, with uh, the board and the uh, executive? But they a good relationship, and um, was, was the executive always at the meetings That's of the board? The executive is at all meetings. Okay. Uh, the relationship is very good. It, it obviously has to be, there has to be the tension between a board, the, the regular tension should go on between a board and its executives so that you test what's going on. But the relationship is excellent. Okay, and Con Deputy Connolly now.